Welcome back guys and today we are once again going to be talking about Forza Horizon 5. Now in this video we're going to be going over a couple of different things that we may have missed in our initial video about the reveal but we're also going to be going a little bit more in depth on some of the anticipated things for the future of Horizon 5 and we're also going to be going over some of the different things that have been floating around in the community. So without any further ado let's go ahead and jump right into the rest of the video and I hope you guys enjoy and also if you guys have any other suggestions or anything that you would like me to go into in a little bit more depth or detail be sure to leave those ideas and suggestions in the comments down below. Now, I know a lot of people have touched on this at this point, but I really wanted to go ahead and say how excited I am about the fact that here we can see this McLaren actually adjusting its roof in the middle of gameplay. Like, the dude is like, yeah, I'm just gonna put the top up. Don't worry about it. Put it up, put it down, whatever you want to do, just while he's sitting there in the middle of a town. Like, no big deal. Now, something else that's been floating around a lot lately is the confusion over the fact that the store page for Horizon 5 showed that it supported mods. Now, this actually popped up in the official FAQs for the game where it says, does Forza Horizon 5 allow mods? No, Forza Horizon 5 does not allow mods in any way. And that was the answer to that question on the official FAQ. So, not really sure where that came from or how that cropped up. I'm not sure if it was an issue with the store page itself or if it was some kind of, like, listing issue for when the game actually made its way onto its own store page but regardless I've seen some people asking whether or not that game is going to allow mods and it seems as of right now they have pretty much put that to bed put that to rest on the official uh, FAQs but I wanted to also clear that up right here and now and put that out there. Now, one of the things that really does consistently take me back to all of my amazing memories of Halo Forge is this shot that you see of the Event Lab. Now, obviously, we've got the new Bronco running around, and that in itself is super, super exciting to see in a game. But the coolest thing about this is, like, if you look in the back, look at all those crazy tracks that are all over the place. I mean, essentially, with Event Lab you'll be able to build your own track and then fill it with giant bowling pins if that's what you desire to do. But I think that the ideas that will come out of Event Lab really do go much deeper than that, and they really will venture, in my opinion, into the territory of people that want to build their own dedicated drift courses, people that want to build their own dedicated, uh, like, stunt areas. Like, for example, some of the crazy, crazy stunt videos that we've seen out of various uh, Horizon creators over the past couple of years and that in itself, the sort of stunt space in this game, has really grown into something that a lot of people really didn't expect. I mean, myself included, but some of the, th the things that these people are able to pull off, whether it's these double barrel rolls that land into a continuous drift or things that are even crazier than that, I, for one, cannot wait to see what the community comes up with out of the event lab itself. Now, let's talk more about off-roading. Now, off-roading has become a more and more and more prevalent part of the Forza series ever since Horizon 3 and into Horizon 4 and now of course in Horizon 5 where we see this gorgeous terrain on the edge of this volcano. Now one of the coolest things that the trailer actually showed was someone in a buggy driving right down the edge of that volcano and I think at that point I realized we really will have a very wide open space to really engage in a lot of different kinds of off-road gameplay. Now, personally, I am hoping that the rocks are a little bit less slippery than they were in previous titles. Like, for example, in Forza Horizon 4, where if you try to drive up a rock, it would basically, you would just basically slip right off and that would be that. Now, I don't say that in a bad way at all. I mean, really, at the end of the day, we are still going to explore as many off-road areas as we humanly possibly can. And like I said before, I'm just hoping for a little bit more traction on the rocks because traction on the rocks would make that off-road experience just feel a little bit more, uh, not even like authentic would be the wrong word, but it would be a little bit more enjoyable because there would be a lot more line choices that you would be able to take when you'd be four-wheeling with your friends in multiplayer, just kind of free-roaming around and being like, hey, I want to go make a trail out of that. Let's do it. We also definitely need to take a moment to talk about how gorgeous the tire smoke is when we see this C8 Corvette drifting with this Aventador. Now, actually, if you compare this tire smoke to the tire smoke that you've been seeing in Horizon 4 from the gameplay you've been watching in the background through this video, it's definitely a very interesting difference because the smoke in Horizon 5 looks a lot thicker, it looks a lot denser, and it definitely looks like it's going to make for a lot of interesting photo and video opportunities in the game when you're drifting around with a big group of cars 
cars because I don't think it's necessarily going to be enough to like smoke out the car behind you but at the same time it's a lot more smoke than before and I think it's going to fall right in that perfect little zone of what the drift community is really going to like and really going to appreciate in terms of tire smoke in general because tire smoke is a really big part of drifting it's a really big part of what makes it look cool Another spot where we see that improved tire smoke is the shot where you can see an Evo 10 actually drifting around this sort of roundabout slash city center. And I really like how this looks. Once again, you can also see, because it's an all-wheel drive car, you can see that they've also not only exaggerated the smoke on the rear tires, but also exaggerated the smoke coming off the front tires as well, which means when you're sliding around in an all-wheel drive car, there are a lot of opportunities for you to get those really cinematic-looking Ken Block-style almost, you know, burnout slash all-wheel drive drift photos and videos. And I think, once again, I think it's going to look really, really, really good. Now, another shot that I really wanted to talk about from the trailer was this view of a lot of the buggies jumping off the top of the volcano. Now, we can see the winding road working its way down the mountain, but we can also see a couple of little cities out in the distance, and we can actually see all the way out to the water. And what I love about looking at this picture in particular is the fact that everything between here and there should be drivable. That is such an incredible scope. The amount of, of scope that you have to work with there is so incredibly huge. And looking out into the distance and staring out into the distance really does show you, like I said before, how much actual play area there is going to be in this game. Now, one of the other spots from the gameplay trailer that I really wanted to dive into more in detail was this section where they actually drove through the canyons. Now, I've slowed this footage down because I really wanted to take an in-depth look at what was going on here within the environment and within the other cars and how they were interacting with the environment. And not only am I noticing a whole bunch of new environmental features like different trees that we didn't have before, but, but if you look up at those canyon walls on the side, I don't know about you, but I'm imagining some really crazy off-roading opportunities, right? I'm imagining some absolutely wild off-road opportunities and the railway bridge that we saw right there at the beginning of the clip and also that we're seeing here uh, that they're about to go under. Is that going to be drivable? Who knows? Are you going to be able to get up there? Who knows? But it also does confirm the activity of a train and I'm hoping that that train is just as active, if not more active, than the train in Horizon 4 was because interacting with that train always made for some really interesting opportunities opportunities for just crazy scenarios and moments that you didn't really expect to happen. And yes, there have been some spots where, I mean, the train in Horizon 4 has, yes, it has caused some sketchy scenarios for me where maybe it ended a combo a little bit too early or maybe it cut off a race a little bit too early, but that's part of being in a more dynamic open world and it's one of those things that brings the world to life. And so I'm really happy to see that train coming back and becoming a brand new part of the game again. Now, something else that I really think we need to talk about is the confirmation of future expansions. Now, obviously, it's a Horizon game, and we pretty much expected that it's going to have a lineup of future expansions, but... As is confirmed in the FAQs page, the premium edition, the $99 top of the line edition of the game, will be coming with, of course, the base game itself, the car pass, expansion one, expansion two, the VIP package, the welcome pack, and also the early access beginning on November 5th, 2021. So once again, I would personally recommend that being the version to get. That's the version I plan on getting. And at the end of the day, I feel like that's going to be the version of the game that will have the most lasting potential, right? I feel like that's going to be the best value proposition over time, especially if you're somebody that spent a lot of time playing Horizon 4 and played it, you know, over its almost its entire lifespan. And I think once again, if that's the way you plan on playing this game, I would recommend going with the premium edition. But that is, of course, completely 100% up to you. And of course, I will be keeping my eyes peeled for any new information that I can find on what those new expansions are going to be, of course, later on down the road. Now, I don't really think we're going to be finding out much about those expansions very soon because, once again, you know, the game literally just got announced. But the fact that they've already put the information out there that they plan on doing both of those expansions within that first, you know, DLC cycle, I'm really excited to see where those expansions go and what they could unlock 
stuck within the game itself because the game is already going to be the biggest Horizon game they've ever made and they're already talking about two more expansions to it. So that in itself is freaking huge. Now, let me know in the comment section down below what you are most excited about and also let me know if there is anything that you would like me to try to go more in depth on in a future video about Horizon 5. And that is going to do it for this one, guys. And if you enjoyed and of course have any feedback or opinions at all, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn those notifications on and I will see y'all next time. Talk to you guys later.